Praise the Lord, everybody. Lift your hands up and say hallelujah. Come on. This is the house of this is the house of the boss. You know who the boss is? Yes. He's the boss. You understand the boss? When you work for things, you have to work well for the boss. Say, I'm working for the boss. Yes. Oh, here's. Yes. We must do what the one who called us wants us to do. The first thing, number one, is to glorify him. And I don't say this because I'm a preacher. I say this because I'm his, I'm his son, I'm a believer. We must glorify him. By doing what? Number one, say thanks. Thanks that I'm here. Thanks that I didn't die along the way. Oh my God, oh my God, hallelujah. Thank you so much for giving me life. Yes. Say thank you, Lord. Yes, we're alive. Say I'm alive. I am alive. I remember this one preacher. I don't know where he was from, from Africa somewhere. We were in Europe, and he said, "Say I am alive," and he'd have everybody say that. I was laughing. I never forgot that. And this guy was on fire. You see, his countenance was lit up. He was smiling all the time. He was happy. He was exhorting people all the time. Not just because he's a preacher, because he's a son of God. Amen. Lift your hands and say, I'm a son. Now, if you're a daughter, say you're a daughter, okay? I am a son. You can't be a, do a son if you <laughs> although spiritually, <laughs> spiritually, you, uh, we're all sons of God. Now we are this, the sons of God. And the earth groans and travails for the manifestation of the sons of God. That means everybody spiritually is the offspring and the Bible calls us the sons. Even the daughters are the sons in the spirit. Yeah. But you, you, you know, you take your, your, your gender. By the way, God made two genders, male and female created he him. Male and female, he created he them. And that was it. That was end. That was the end of it. So the sons and daughters of God are supposed to have the nature and grace of heaven. Amen. To perform. Say I'm a performer. Not an actor. Not a celebrity. Not an entertainer. But I'm a performer in the works of God. I must do the works of God while it is day because the night comes when no man can work anymore. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost on me right now. And I made a decision a long time ago that I'm not going to get to the time of the night time and have so much regret because I didn't do enough in the daytime. So we need vision. The vision will give you life. The vision will give you purpose and direction. The vision of God will give you passion. To produce the works of God. And the Lord is saying that I want my people to be representatives of me in the earth. Jesus said, as my father sent me, so I send you. As sheep among wolves. Yeah, uh-huh. And the Lord is serious about us being a sheep. But there's another animal that I like better than sheep is the lion, Simba. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, we're quick, we're quick. So uh, the lion is, is the ruler of the jungle and the territory of where he is. So the Lord is likened unto the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah 
He likens himself to a lion. Isn't that amazing? Lift your hands and say, I am a lion. I'm the ruler of the jungle. I'm called to take dominion. I'm the ruler of everything. Yes, you need to know that. See, societies and people and demons and cultures and systems have taught you to be subdued and suppressed. Uh -huh. Even the colonization of the lands, of the nations, taught you to be suppressed. Mm -hmm. But God called us <laughs> giants and giant slayers. He called us kings and priests. He called us his royal priesthood. He even called us his holy nation. And he said, a little one will become like a thousand and a small one like a strong nation. He said, I, the Lord, will hasten this in its time. And I'll tell you it's time now. Lift your hands. Isaiah 60, 22 says a little one, say that's me, will become like a thousand and a small one like a strong nation. And then the Lord said, I will hasten this in its time. Let me, let me explain to you what that means. Let me explain to you what that means. It says it's time. In other words, God is already ready. You can never tell me doctrinally or spiritually it's total error for you to ever say God is not ready to do something. Don't ever try to say it. People in the church talk nonsense. They say, oh, it, it's, God has a timing. Oh, yeah. His timing happened already. We say we're waiting on him. He's waiting on us. The Lord said to me one time, he said, you, about this scripture, he said, I was already ready. I was waiting for you to be ready. And when you're ready, now it's the it's time. Now it's going to happen. Yes. But the fault was never in me. It's only in you. I can never be unready. I can never be unorganized. Lift your hands and say, God is not unorganized. He's never unready. He's never weak. He's never wondering about anything. He's very decisive. Someone who could make all of the animals the way he made all the creation. How long did it take him to think about all of that? It's astounding. Every day I see, especially because of the internet, you see new creatures every day. New species of animals, birds, colors, beautiful creations, all kinds of things. And God thought about all of that and created all of those things. And then he stamped the DNA that the animal, when it reproduces itself, it gives birth to the same thing as the... It's amazing. It's amazing. So is he somebody that's not ready? Can someone stand up and teach you accurately to say timing? So now it's July. But really it's really it's July, but God's going to be ready in October. The Lord is brilliant. And he said, now I want my nature to be in you. Genesis 126 said this. He said, I made you in my own image after my own likeness. 
And I want you to have dominion over everything in the earth. Wow. If you spend any time thinking about that, it'll blow your mind. You mean, Lord, you want me to have dominion over everything on the earth. That's what it said. He said the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the things that creep on the earth, everything is for you. And are we doing that? You're, you're paying rent to somebody. You need permission to do something. You're working for somebody else or not working. I pray and prophesy that everybody will have find their purpose in Jesus name of what God wants you to be a ruler of, what he wants you to do in business, what he wants you to do in your career. If you're called to the ministry that you'll build an organization. Love one another. Make disciples. Raise up an organization. Do the works of Jesus. And take the whole world to heaven. Are we doing that? Not enough. Not enough. Say, I, say, Lord, I repent. Say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent for not doing more. For not doing more. Lift your hands and say, Lord, touch me, help me. Now, whatever you want in life that you have a desire for that's good, you can have it. But that's not the main event. The main event is to preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> Once you're a believer, you want to win souls to the Lord. You want to talk about Jesus. You want to expand his empire on the earth. And guess what? Say what? Guess what? In the middle of that, you can get blessed yourself. Oh. In the middle of you doing the works of God, you can be, have a blessed life. Another thing you said, I was listening. If you're not doing good works, who's supposed to pay you? Think about it. If you do a lot, you'll get paid a lot. The level of the problems you solve is the level of the payments you can receive in life. Yes. A high level practitioner, an expert, a professional gets paid good money. Someone that can't do much very well, they don't get paid much or at all. How much more in the kingdom if you apply yourself to the gift that God gave you and become good at it and work with it and work with the anointing and flow in the things of the spirit. God, God says, I like you. I like you. You like because you like what I like. Promotion from the Lord doesn't always come because you go to church or pray or read your Bible. Although we need to do those things. Promotion comes from being a good manager. Yes. If you can manage what God has given you at the level you have it now well, He'll promote you. Lift your hands, say, Lord, I receive your promotion. But first, I have to manage my life well. So there's a part of this thing that's the personal about yourself. And then there's the part about the big picture of the whole world, mm -hmm. reaching the whole world. You have to look at yourself, like looking in the, in the, in the image of the reflection, like it says in uh, Corinthians. 318, 318. Is it first or second? First Corinthians 318 or second Corinthians? 318. 
It says, looking, I'm beholding myself, looking in a reflection, and, and the glory of the Lord is there. And what he's doing is he's analyzing me. When you look at your reflection, you see yourself. What's right and what's wrong. If, if anybody had mirrors, that the kind of mirrors you could put in the front and the back and the side and the room everywhere, and you could look around and see everything about you, you'd get scared. Because our eyes are looking forward. We don't see everything that's everywhere. But we need to ask God to shine the light upon us and say, Lord, you, you know the scripture says that, Teach me your ways, but also um, cleanse my ways. Mm. Psalm 119 said, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to the word of God. Now this is a dangerous prayer, but if you do it, you'll get blessed. Get ready. Lift your hands and say, Lord. Shine your light upon me. Show me everything about myself, good and bad. And bring me all the help I need to fix everything in my life. Everything I need for your purpose, I command it to come to me now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The friends, the mentors, the teachers, the coaches, the trainers, and the principals, the things that I need to fix everything in my life. And what I've learned about the scriptural plan of action that you have, let me do those things. I'm a tither, I'm a giver, I'm, I'm, I'm living holy, I'm obedient. I'm following your instructions. This is very important. Then God can begin to promote you. I say this about the situation about uh, the biblical economic system of the Bible. If you want God to bless you, if you want God to bless you, I'm not talking about somebody else, I'm talking about God himself, you have to follow his instruction plan. And he gave some instructions on what to do. And he said, by doing this, I'll bless you. As you do these things, I'll bless you. That's it. It's simple. You say it may seem hard, but you just, just do it. Just do what he said. Jesus' mom said in John chapter 2 at the marriage supper, uh, feast of the at Cana in Galilee, said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. We, we make it so hard. But it's not very difficult. Lift your hands and say, more grace upon me, Lord. To obey your word. Lead me and guide me into all truth. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And by taking heed according to your word, I'll be blessed. I'll be empowered in life. Things will begin to go well for me. The scripture says, honor your father and mother that you may live long and your life may go well. That's one principle. Ephesians 6.1. So children, obey your parents, your, your parents in the Lord. Which means you can also have a spiritual father. Follow the instructions that are given. We don't teach for ourselves, we teach for the body of Christ. Oh yes. The anointing is, is we feel it. I feel it right now. I feel it right now. It's a wonderful feeling. It energizes me. It makes me feel great. I feel good. I feel excited. But, but really the anointing is to provide what's needed for the church. 
Le nasikia vizuri kwa ajili ya ufako nasikia sawa lakini ufako ni kwa ajili ya kutoa kile kinahitajika kwa kanisa. Even the gift of the pa- to be a pastor or a teacher your, your job is to teach the sheep and feed the sheep. Hata kama ni mtungaji kazi yako ni kufundisha na kulisha kundi lako kondoo sasa. And the more you do that well you'll also get blessed yourself. Na unapofanya hilo pia na utabarikiwa. God is the only person in the universe who makes a guaranteed promise that cannot be broken by anything of what he will do for us when we do things for him. Man can lie, the devil definitely is a liar. Man can be uh, uh, unreliable But God is never unreliable. I love Numbers 23:19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie or ever change his mind. He says, what I said I will do, I will do it. Jeremiah also said his word is like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. He said I am the God of all flesh also. Is there anything too hard for me? Psalm 27 said but the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. He's reliable, he's dependable. If you're in his hand, truly you're in the best place you could be in the universe. David even said, if I try to run away from you, where can I go anyway? Lift your hands and wave to the Lord and say thank you, thank you, thank you. I want us to be gra- I want us to be grateful today. I want us I want us to feel I want us to give God thanks that he's kept us, he's protected us. We're living in Psalm 91. I dwell in the secret place of the most high the shadow, under the shadow of the almighty and I'll say of the Lord Yes. He's my refuge, my strength, my high tower, my buckler, my shield. In him will I trust. Yes. And nothing evil shall can come and yes. get me. Yes. Luke 10:19 said I tread upon serpents and scorpions and and I crush them under my feet and nothing in this world can hurt me. Because I'm walking in the power of God. Yes. Yes. But with all of that I'm supposed to be doing something. Hallelujah. I'm supposed to be doing things to advance. What it is the Lord wants done. Say I am a servant. Say I am a servant. But I'm also God's friend. Oh yes, Abraham's secret to blessing was he was God's friend. Moses' secret to power was that God spoke to him face to face. Like a man speaks to his friends. But guess what? Say what? Moses and Abraham were not the only two that could have that. Every one of you here wherever we are can also have that. But you first have to desire that. You first have to ask God for that. Lord, make me your friend. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere in the spirit right now. I'm going to have my own time in prayer while I'm preaching here. I just, Lord, make me your friend. I want to be your friend. I hear your voice. And something amazing about me, God speaks to me every single day. You say, really? Yes, he does. He speaks to me so much. I'm always documenting things he's saying and I I'm trying to write it. I'm trying to record it because there's so much flowing all the time. And and what is it about me? Uh, yes, I'm his prophet. God talks to his prophets. But I'm his friend. So he wants to share himself with me. He wants to share his thoughts with me. He wants to give me revelation about his plan of action, what he wants to do. And if you could get in the in the river flowing, the waterfall flowing, the fountain being open where God begins to speak, my God, your life will change. You'll hear so much. God will talk. God will talk so much you almost will get scared.
wewe oh, wakati unaingia katika mtumiriko wa moto wewe oh, bwana atakumbuka na wewe ni ukafikia vile bwana anazungumza How many would like that? Ni wangapi wangependa hiyo? Oh yes. Yes. It can happen from today. Inaweza kufanyika kuanzia leo. Many people are sitting, they're struggling, they're sad, they're tired. They don't know what to do. They're letting all of the circumstances of the world and environments affect them. And God looks at, at all of us and says, my child, come up higher. Please. Come up higher, come up where I am. Come out of that mess and come up where I am. Even if you're in the worst place in the world. And I'm telling you around here, there are some worst places of the world here. I've seen them. For me being from New York City, a very beautiful city, well built, well designed, well maintained, well... I, I, I was shocked. I'm shocked at some of the things I see. And I'll say this officially from heaven, that God never intended anybody to live like that. Lift your hands and say, I'm coming out. Say, I'm coming out. But it doesn't matter where you are. You could you could exit the natural and go into the spiritual in prayer and begin to pull a higher life into your life. As you begin to come out of the natural and say, Lord, I'm not going to look at all these things around me, how bad they are. Catch me up where you are. Like you caught the, the, the apostles and the, 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 the patriarchs of old into your presence. Do it for me. Lift your hands and say yes. I got, God is looking at these people. Lift your hands and say yes. Lift your hands. God is looking at people. Can you imagine the Bible says, I'm going to give you the, I'm, I'm all in the scripture here and I'm giving you scriptural premises for all of this. He says his eyes go to and fro over the whole earth looking for one whose heart is per perfect toward him. He sees one, he says, you my brother. He sees you my sister. The other one next to you looks tired, eh, indifferent. God says, ah, I skip over them. You don't think he does that? He does. For God to find someone that's a jewel in his, his eyes, a beautiful person in his eyes. A person who's on fire, who loves him with all their heart and wants to serve him and obey him. It's rare. Not everybody's like that. And you look at some people that are extremely powerful in the spirit, in the ministry. You have very few amongst the whole church world. You have activists or people that have a, a voice uh, like to be a deliverer of people out of injustice and all that. Very few, very few. You'll only find one or two or three. And, and I don't endorse these men that I'm going to name. I don't, I don't want to say that uh, I'm promoting them, but I just want to give you three examples that I can think of. Nelson Mandela for South Africa. Look what happened with him. He was thrown into an injustice. He came out a uh, bitter free. He was able to deal with himself and not hate the enemy. And he, he was risen up to be the, the president of the nation. From the prison to the palace. What about him? Look at Martin Luther King in America who had a message of, I have a dream that all people will be together as one. Oh my God! And they killed him for it. They killed him for it. And look at Mother Teresa in Calcutta, India. She went there and saw the people and just loved them and wanted to help them. And she became a, a figure in history because of the work she did. What was different about them than you? Was Martin or Nelson a man like you? Was Ma Ma Mother Teresa a, a woman like any of you? Yes. But something got a hold of their heart and they began to apply themselves to it. When God's taking me around the whole world, 
I heard the call, God said go, and I decided to go, and I went. Millions of miles, millions of people, all six continents of the world, I've been there. With my blessed feet, I've stood on all six continents of the world, preached the gospel, prophesied over nations. Why? Because I chose to go. And then the way God speaks to me about the nation, things for the nation. People have said, there's no one that's heard God talk to you about this nation than, than you. Like that. I think I have almost 1,000 written prophecies that I've delivered over this nation alone. Many yet, there's so many, I haven't been able to publish them all, but I will. And uh, they, they've come to pass. The development of the city, I could say so many things. I, and maybe in another, in another service I'll get into that. Why? Because I chose to obey the call. Lift your hands and say, I'm called to be great. A greatness is in me from Jehovah. And I'm responsible to do something. You want to be raised up? You want to be powerful? You want to be productive? You want to be fruitful? You have to show yourself to God that you're serious. I like that word. Serious. Inside the word serious, we get the word series. Which means a number of successions of events ongoing. And scripture, John 8.31 says, as you continue in my words, then you're my disciples indeed. Yes, and continue means to continue. And the scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing. Why did Jesus say, and hearing again? Because it's, a, it's supposed to be a repeated thing. And the scripture says in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, I come that you would have life and life more abundantly. Which tells me something. There's two realms of it. There's life where you're alive, but you, but you may not have the abundant life. Life and then, and if you want to really flow in the higher realm of things, and more abundantly. And some people have not gotten there yet. But I pray and declare over you that you're going to get there. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to live the abundant life. Oh yes, yeah, say I'm going to be blessed in everything I do. Ah. Say I'm going to prosper in all my ways. Prosper, and everything I touch will prosper. Yeah, and the Lord takes pleasure in my prosperity. Psalm 35, 27. Yes. Everything I'm doing is supposed to be, I'm supposed to be blessed. Yes. I'm supposed to flourish. Yes. I'm supposed to be successful. Yes. Isaiah 48, 17 said, I am the Lord thy God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. So you're called to profit, but the way to get there is to be led in the way you're supposed to be going. Isaiah 45 said, I have all kinds of treasures for you. <laughs> it's amazing. And he said, I'll give you all these treasures. And then the next verse, he said, by this, you'll know that I'm the Lord, your God, who even calls you by your own name. Because I'm blessing you so much. I'm the author of the blessing. God doesn't have poverty for his people. He has prosperity for his people. That's how it is. So wherever you are, you can start to change everything in your world by what you see in the realm of the Spirit. What you see in the Word of God. 
Because you're supposed to be living by this standard of this book. Not by circumstances, but by this. You have your Bibles? I was in a meeting uh, uh, a couple of weeks back and this little boy held up a tablet in the back. I looked, it looked very thin. I thought, oh, is that a Bible or is that a tablet? I said, it's a tablet. I said, uh, do you know how to use that? He said, yes. I said, do you have the Bible software in there? He said, yes. I said, can you open it and get all the scriptures in there? He said, yes. I'm like, brilliant young man. Yeah. I said, what's your, what's your name? He says, my name is Blessing. I said, wow. Your mama named you a blessing. Okay. And how old are you? 12. Smart kid. Jesus was like that. He didn't wait till he was older. He started when he was 12. He got lost from the family to work with what he was going to be doing later. And some of us, time has gone by. But it's not too late. Lift your hands, please. I'm, I know I'm like the uh, gym instructor. I'm telling you, lift your hands, shout, but we need to do it. Psalm 121 says, look up to the hills from what's coming to you. Help your help comes from the Lord. Isaiah 2 says, look up to the mountain. The build up there. Mount Zion is up, 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 up. It's not down, 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 down. Down on the ground, you have mud and filth and dirt and insects and creatures and mess and garbage that people threw there. Don't look down, look up. Because the possibilities are endless when you're looking up. Lift your hands and say, I'm climbing up from today. I'm not going to stay where I am. God, you have a higher way for me. It has to happen now. But it's going to come by me taking heed according to this. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you some help. Find the scriptures that really jump at you. Read. When you see something, wow, that's a principle. I take it. Just memorize it. Memorize it. Myself, I have probably a thousand plus scriptures inside of me. More, even more. If I stood here till this evening and till the next morning, I could be quoting scriptures without notes, without stopping. And the Holy Spirit will show me which one and they just come out. Why? Because I've studied. Even to want to be good in this thing of, of gospel ministry, you study to show yourself approved, Paul said to Timothy. Study, 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 learn, learn get revelation when you come to speak in five minutes you can you can ruin uh, you can bless a whole uh, the whole world because so much is in you somebody said when they see someone they can listen to them for some one minute and they know what kind of person they are so why is it that some people speak and they don't ever say anything much. It's because it's not enough is in them. I'll give you a challenge. Please cultivate the brilliance that God put in you. Please. Lay your hand on your heart and say, Lord, I will. Put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, I will. I'll cultivate. Cultivate is a word meaning to plow, dig, plant, build. I'll build on the brilliance that you put in me, Lord. Because I'm responsible in this generation to get the job done. The night is coming when nobody can work anymore. Matthew 25 talked about the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. Five applied themselves to keep their oil lamps full, which is symbolic of the anointing. Or what's good about God with them, if I can make it simple. And the other ones didn't care. Then there was a time when they, when they needed to go and they couldn't. Only the five that had the lamps full could get to the next place. And the other ones cried, but they couldn't get through. Don't ever let that be you. Don't ever let that be you. Say, Lord, not me. Not me. 
every day have the passion to serve God. Every day wake up in the morning and talk to the Lord. If you don't have time to have a whole prayer meeting, just talk to the Lord for a few moments and say, Lord, please direct me today. And ask him, what's on your mind and heart today for me? What are you thinking about? Do we ever ask him that? I do. Show me what to do today. Before you go to sleep at night, ask the Lord, show me what to do tomorrow. Let me be prepared for the next day in my sleep when then I can wake up energized, ready to move. Now I say this compassionately, really, with a heart of a father, a heart of love. I say this as a shepherd. I, you can't move unless you have direction. You can't, you can't move unless you know where to move. Yes. You can't do what you don't see. <laughs> Lay your hands on your head as a point of contact. Say, Father, please open my eyes. Show me, Father. Show me, show me, show me. Talk to me. I'm your son. I, if you're a lady, you say you're his daughter. You're a king, you're a queen. And the little babies are princes and princesses. We are a royal priesthood. We're a royal nation. We're a holy nation, a royal family. And the king of kings and the Lord of lords is ready to stand to talk to us. Habakkuk 2 verse 1 said, I'll stand on my watch to see what the Lord will say. And the Lord said, write the vision down and make it plain. That others can read it and then run with it. Nehemiah saw the wall broken down and he got grieved and decided to rebuild it. Isaiah 61, 7 said, you'll rebuild, or 4 or 7, whichever it is, says you'll rebuild the ruined places of many generations. The anointing will help you rebuild the desolations of many generations. The anointing fixes things. The direction of God makes you a problem solver. Oh yes. Say I'm a problem solver. I don't want to be a problem creator. My dear friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch says something. He says, you'll be known in life for one of two things, either the problems you solved or the problems you created. Make it your desire and mission to be a problem solver, not a problem creator. Any problem you see can be fixed. If you get the mind of God. I have a friend in America, a very great apostle. In fact, if I said his name, he's known around the world. He's on worldwide television. He's extremely well known. Very powerful man of God. He was having three conferences in a certain month every year. And he got disturbed in his spirit. And he said, Lord, I feel like the people come for this one and then they have to leave to go back because he has a youth one, a kids one, and then he has his main uh, conference the next week. So he says, the people that were here last week, they had to leave to go back home. And then now they're not going to be here for this one. And I feel like we're missing. Lord, please, is there a solution? He went to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord showed him, he said he just had to sleep on and pray. And the Lord showed him, why not combine all three in one? And how? He'd have to be blessed to do that. He said, we'll put up a tent that sees 3,000 on the back part of the property. And that will be the place for the main conference. This one that we built here that seats 10,000 will be for the youth and the kids will be over there in the other building. And we'll have all in one week. The kids there, the youth there, and the adults here at the same time. And him as the preacher, he can go speak to them, have his other ministers there, go to the one, go to the other. And all of this together, the Lord gave him that idea. Brilliant.
millions. So anything you want to solve in your life, God has the answer. Yes, lift your hands and say, Lord, I know you have the answer. Please talk to me. That's a simple example, but it's like that anything that you're facing, God has a solution. He also has people that will help you. He has divine connections that you can meet, that you can do things together. One way to fail really big is to be with the wrong people. Can I prophesy over you? You look like you're just looking at me. Okay, lift your hands. Can I prophesy over you? Father, from today, in Jesus' name, put the exit sign up to every wrong person that's around my brother or my sister listening to me. And give them the best of help from today. Let the wrong connections dissolve and disconnect. And let the right connections be connected. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when you have the right people, you can get a lot done. Because you're in agreement. The scripture says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And Psalm 133 said, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And God said, the anointing will flow from the head to the beard, to the, to the garments, down to the whole body. And then he said this powerfully, I will command my blessing there. Sometimes people are trying to do things in the wrong way with the wrong people and they don't get blessed. So let's, let's, let's look, it really stands out in the spirit, the word unity. When your hearts are one for the same agenda, you can work together. And God's agenda must be our agenda. But our agenda also needs to be the other person's agenda. We work together in the right agenda. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for divine connections. All these are prophetic declarations I'm making over the people. And you catch a hold of this, your life will change. When somebody's not working out, don't try to fix it. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Never breathe life into something God is killing. <laughs> don't try to resurrect a dead thing. <laughs> Find a better thing. <laughs> because it's there. <laughs> there are people everywhere. <laughs> I know this in my spirit and it gives me a little bit of hope. That there are great people all over Nairobi to do many things. They're here. They're right here. Now, people just need to find them. They need to find us. We need to find them. Everything you want for your dream, God has the provision for the vision. Provision, P-R-O, means for, F-O-R. Provision for the vision. I have the provision, says the Lord. And that comes in every way. It comes in material things. It comes in resources. It comes in money. It comes in people. You could have one man here who's very dull, doesn't have a lot of good thought. And you could have another man over here who's brilliant and has... The keys to the best things in life. A business principal would say, leave this one alone and spend more time with this guy. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I believe the right people are coming my way. They're coming. Oh, yes. God has ordained it so. Because you can't fulfill the vision without help. You can't. Everything you want to see happen can be built. Someone say, oh yes. Yes. It can. And it must be built. And it will be built. For the glory of God. Joshua 1.8 said, meditate in my word day and night. 
And then you'll make your way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. Take heed according to his word. Find the things in here that jump at you. And memorize them. And speak them aloud. And you'll be built up. Also Jude 20. Jude, the little book of Jude, the one chapter book. Right before Revelation, Jude, J-U-D-E, the 20th verse says, pray in the Holy Ghost and build yourself up. You know what was good about Paul? He said, he got so much revelation. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. So speaking in tongues is the language God gives you in the spirit to speak his own divine will. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. And you, you don't even know what it is. And the devil doesn't know what you're saying. Only the Holy Spirit, God, knows what you're saying. Unless he gives the interpretation, then you can speak it. But that's also supernatural. So spend time in the Word. Spend time praying in the Spirit. And look at all your situations and begin to laugh at them. And say, ha, 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 I'm above you. You don't have me, I have you. And I'm rising up to the higher place in God. Let's pray for a minute. Let's all just pray for a minute right now. Close your eyes and pray. You're good people. You're listening well. But I want you to, get, I want you to move a little bit right now. We're not just here to listen, we're here to take action. Just pray right now. Say, Lord, based on what I've heard, I'm going to take action on this. And Father, I invoke everything that's been said here, that my life will go forward now to higher places. And it, pray this, to, just be praying with me as I'm saying this. It doesn't matter what I see around me. I know there are greater things for me in my life. And that day begins now, today. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday, I'll forget about the past. Isaiah 43, 18, consider not the things of old. Remember not the former things. But behold, I'm going to do a new thing, verse 19. And shall it not spring forth? And verse 20 said, I'll even make rivers to run in the wilderness. Which means the dry places, whatever dry places in your life, the river of God can still come. If you have faith to pull it toward you. Everything can change by faith. We don't walk by sight, we walk by our faith. And Hebrews 10, 35 to 38 is a great passage of scripture. It says, the just shall live by his faith. And it said, uh, 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 forget about these things. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5 said, cast down every imagination that's against Christ. And rise up to the higher thing. For our weapons of war are not natural, but they're spiritual. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. You can make it through. You will make it through. It doesn't matter what's oppressing you now. It doesn't matter what's happening now. God will take you through it and get you to the promised land. For your life, it'll be a great place. And I thank you, Lord, right now. How many received that? Keep praying. Keep praying right now and say, Lord, please do it for me. Do it for me. And then for, in finality, your calling, what it is God has ordained you to do, you must hear from him. You must have specific direction and you must take action on it every day. And he said his yoke is easy and his burdens light. What that means is God gives the grace to you to, to be at peace even in the midst of the storms. Peace is never the absence of outer conflict. It's always the absence of inner conflict. My peace, Jesus said, I give you. Not as the world gives. My joy, I give you. Not as the world gives. And the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. There's always outer conflict. There's always something wrong with somebody. There's always something wrong somewhere. It doesn't matter. The Lord says, what is wrong with you or right with you? That's what matters. 
And when you make the decision and to, to move fo forward, you make the decision. There's a, God gave me a formula, five Ds. Number one is discern, which means to see. Number two means to discover. It's, it's to discover. You, you, as you're stepping into things, you begin to discover how things work. And then number three, you decide to do it, number four. And then that becomes your destiny fulfilled. Discern. Discover. Decide. Do. Destiny. And you don't get to the fifth thing unless you do the first four. God wants us to take action. But it all starts with sight, my friends. It all starts with how you see things. So do a, a, an exercise in the spirit and say, what I see around me doesn't matter. My faith will provide the way forward for my life. That I will fulfill God's perfect plan of action. And say, I will be blessed in the process. I, I will be blessed in the process. I will be mightily blessed in the process. God, you love me. You are, you're going to have mercy on me. And even more so as I serve you. I'm going to be blessed in my life. And I will fulfill the great commission. I will fulfill the vision that you have for my life. And I'm going to embark upon that more from today. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'm honored, and honored to serve you from the table of the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you in the next meeting. Amen. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119-105, the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.